Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Marburger. I am reading from Alvin Ho, and I think what I'm going to do is just finish up the book. There are three more chapters in Alvin Ho before the end, and so I'm going to read all three chapters now, and then I will tell you what your assignment is at the end of this video. All right, so it'll be kind of like a bigger assignment for the end of this book, but I'm hoping that you'll enjoy what I'm going to have you do. All right, so we're at chapter 15. The problem with joining a gang. The first problem with joining a gang is that the pressure starts right away. I dare you to stick your tongue out at the bus driver, ordered Pinky. The gang followed us to the bus. I stood in my driveway. I stuck out my tongue to the bus driver. She didn't look too pleased, but Pinky did. I dare you to yell a bad word at the bus ordered Pinky as the bus pulled away. Now! Zounds! I yelled at the top of my lungs. What? asked Eli. Behold thy mirror, thy spleeny, naughty, padded dewberry, I added for good measure. Okay, forget it, said Pinky impatiently. Whatever. The second problem with joining a gang is that Flea gave me the eye. Then she turned and went down the street, swinging her cool peg leg and all without even a word. The third problem with joining a gang is that you don't know what they'll make you do, but I had a feeling it would be scary. I thought about this as we walked up my driveway. I dare you, said Pinky, looking up, to jump off the roof of your house. I'm telling mom, said Calvin, who was right behind us. He ran into the house. Mom! I heard him yelling, Mom! My heart thumped like crazy. My mom is an ace rescuer. She would save me. She always does. But my mom did not come out, and neither did Calvin. So I scratched the old pox on my left side, and then I scratched the old pox on my right side. Then I looked up at the roof of my house. It was a long way up. I swallowed. It was all I could do not to cry. But it is important at moments like this to not show how really you feel. It is kind of like playing poker. Even if you're losing, you have to pretend you're winning. Well, said Pinky. Okay, I said, but I was not okay. I could just about pee in my pants right now. One moment I'm standing in my driveway and the next moment I could be on my driveway. Dead. Just like that. Well, said Pinky, what are you waiting for? Mm, I got to go to the bathroom first, I said. And I ran inside, rushed up the stairs and used the bathroom. Then I went into my bedroom and looked out the window. It was a long way down. Calvin and Annabelle were playing catch with Gung Gung in the backyard. Further down the road, Flea was playing by herself in her own backyard, building something that looked like a pyramid. It was fabulous, even from far away. This is a fastball. Gung Gung's voice floated up to my ears. He is my grandpa from my mom's side. And when he is at my house after school, it means that my mom is at work and he is here to keep his eye on things. I looked down at Pinky. He was shouting something at me and his face was very pink. He looked much smaller than he used to. In fact, from where I was, Pinky was just a Pinky. I went back downstairs. I'm not going to jump off my roof, I told Pinky. Why not? I have acrophobia, I said. Huh? said Pinky. Fear of heights, I explained. Well then, said Pinky, I dare you to watch a scary movie. I froze. I hated scary movies. They gave me nightmares, and after I watch one, I can't eat, I can't talk, I can't walk, I can't sleep, I can't get it out of my head. But I supposed it was better than jumping to my death in my own driveway and then having Louise run over my dead body. I wanted to cry like the end of a rain pipe on a rainy day, but I didn't. It's important at moments like this to not show how you really feel. It's like marching to the doctor's office for a vaccination. Even though the shot could kill you, you still have to look like you don't know it. So I began to march. Fortunately, the longest path to the TV at our house is through the backyard. Hi, Alvin, called Annabelle cheerfully. She's always happy to see me, and especially after school. Was that you cursing like an infectious pox-marked weasel at the 
school bus? I didn't answer. Annabelle was wearing my mitt, the one that had my name on it. And she was throwing my ball, the one that used to belong to Dezuki Matsuka, with her two fingers together on the top. She snapped the ball into Gung Gung's glove. Floop! It was a fast ball, all right, but it really wasn't that fast. She was just pretending it was fast. But the sound of Annabelle's fast ball smacking into the mitt is a little scary. It stopped the gang dead in their tracks. Do you want to throw, Alvin? asked Annabelle. I'll catch. No, thanks. I lied. I've got something better to do. Like what? Like prove his bravery, said Pinky, so that he can play with us at school. Annabelle narrowed her eyes, and she put out her hokey pokey foot and made a face that they were going like they were going to have to deal with her first. Annabelle, said Gung Gung, if Alvin would rather not play catch, it's okay. My Gung Gung loves baseball. He is an ace pitching machine. And playing catch with him is our favorite thing to do after school whenever he's around. So Annabelle and Gung Gung went back to throwing the ball, and the gang and I stood there and watched. This is a knuckleball, Gung Gung said, showing Annabelle and Calvin. He bent his two fingers at the knuckle so that they came up like two rabbit ears on the ball and pitched it to Calvin. It was slow and tricky. Calvin hardly knew where it was going. This is a change-up, said my Gung Gung. He shifted his middle finger and fourth finger to the grip the ball from the top. And with the index finger and pinky gripping from the sides and the thumb was on the bottom and he snapped it into Annabelle's glove. It looked like a fast ball, but it was a bit slower. Another tricky ball. It can fool you into swinging early. Then my gung gung demonstrated the two, the two seam fast ball and the four seamed fast ball. Then the split finger and its cousin, the nastier slower fork ball. They are bad, meaning they're fantastic. I could hardly stand it. I love throwing with my gung gung. I love it more than digging holes, and I definitely love it more than doing dares from Pinky. To make matters worse, there was Annabelle using my glove and ball. I thought you boys had something better to do, said gung gung, but no one moved. A breeze swirled crispy leaves up and around our ankles. Oh yeah, said Pinky finally. Yeah, we do. And that is the worst part with joining a gang. Someone else speaks for you. And that is the end of chapter 15. Chapter 16 is a horrific thing. By the time we came up from the basement after watching alien babies land from outer space, it was getting dark. The house was very quiet except for the wind weeping and wailing through the house and the walls and the faint machine gun sound of my mom's sewing machine coming from upstairs. Besides being an ace pitching machine, my gung gung also likes to sew. That wasn't very scary at all, stammered Scooter. No, it wasn't, said Eli. Oh, I've seen scarier, said Nia, shuddering. All those kids are just as scared as he is, right? I said nothing. Let's throw some bee balls, said Pinky. Okay, said Hobson. Whoa, ho, said Pinky, picking up my ball and glove, which Annabelle had left by the door. We even have an autographed bee ball by Alvin Ho. The gang slapped high fives. I slapped nothing. I think there's something wrong with Alvin, said Sam. I could hardly move. I could hardly blink. I could hardly breathe. I could hardly do anything but watch alien babies invade Earth and crawl around like zombies over and over again in my mind. But Pinky and the gang had already gone out, and so had my ball and glove, so I followed it like a zombie myself. Outside, it was a dark and shadowy night. The tree reached its hooked fingers towards me, and the garden hose slithered and hissed. Usually, no one pitches at our house when it gets dark. You can't see what you're doing, and if you miss, you could have a terrible accident. I'd like to learn the fork ball, Pinky said to me. Show me. He threw me the ball and backed up. I froze. A fork ball is a killer. It is slow and nasty. Even in daylight, you can hardly tell where it's going. And if Pinky didn't catch it, the ball could smack him right between the eyes. And it sounds like a good idea to me. 
Come on, said Pinky. You waiting for retirement or something? I shivered. I squinted. It was hard to tell the gang apart from the other creepy shadows in the yard. I haven't got all night, screeched Pinky. So I wound my pitch, I leaned back on one leg, and then I fired it with my might. There was no thud in the glove. A thick, soupy silence poured into our ears. Then, crack, the sound of a window splintering into a million diamonds. Oops. I think I hear my mom calling, said Pinky, and he tossed my glove and had started across the yard when... A horrific thing emerged from the shadows, and it came charging towards us. Half of it was green, and the other half was black. Scales ran along one side, and warts ran down the other. Here's a page of what this. I was ready to pee in my pants, but I didn't. At moments like this, it's important to have already used the bathroom, which I have. Ah! Pinky screamed and belly button piercing scream. Ah! The wind howled and hammered at the house and the fence groaned and creaked. I wanted to scream my head off, but I couldn't. Nothing came out. My heart stopped. My breath stopped. My eyes shut. And when I opened them again, I saw that Pinky had peed in his pants. I didn't know what to say and neither did the rest of the gang. What do you say when someone has just embarrassed himself to death? The horrific thing moved closer. La, 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 it sang. Pinky turned and ran. Ah! He screamed. Hi, Alvin, said the horrific thing. Do you know who it was? Annabelle. But it was not Annabelle. La, 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 it sang again. Had the horrific thing swallowed Annabelle? Do you like my Halloween costume, Alvin? Said Annabelle's voice. Gung Gung just finished it. The horrific thing twirled menacingly one way and then menacingly the other way. It was uglier than any of the alien babies and scarier than the whole movie from beginning to end. Whoa, whoa, what are you? I asked. Half witch and half dragon said Annabelle's voice. I couldn't decide, so Gong Gong said I could be both. Oh, here she is. Then, surprise, surprise, I remembered to say something nice to Annabelle. You look terrific, I said, even though she was ugly enough to make you run. You better come in now, called my Gong Gong from the house. He was a dark shape against the bright light in the doorway. Annabelle and I ran toward the light. Lucky your mother wasn't home, my gung gung said as I stepped past him. You can tell her what happened in the morning. I nodded. Then I looked over my shoulder. The rest of the gang had disappeared. Our yard was quiet. The house next door was completely dark and quiet, too. Lucky the neighbors weren't home, either. All right, chapter 17. Death by Volcano. Hmm. After breakfast the next morning, and after I had forgotten to tell my mom about what happened with the gang, I dashed over to Pinky's house as quickly as I could. Pinky was still in his pajamas watching cartoons. I was in my firecracker man outfit from head to toe. It was Saturday. The world needed saving, and there was no time to wait. But first, I tapped on his living room window. I want a refund. I said when Pinky, Pinky came to the door. What refund? asked Pinky. The Hank Aaron rookie and the Carl Rastromiksky rookie. Remember what I said about that name? I don't know how to say it. I want them back. But I thought we were friends, said Pinky. I had thought all night about it, in between reruns of alien babies crawling around inside my head. And this is what I thought. Playing with Pinky was not a good trade for those cards. I don't like doing the things that you do, I said. Why not? asked Pinky. I'm just not talented in that way, I said. Pinky shrugged. Yeah, you're right, he said. Then he went back into his house, and when he came to the door again, he handed over the cards. The rookies were okay. 
There's a good reason why baseball cards are in plastic pockets. It keeps them dry in case of accidents. Like he peed his pants. I remember that. I breathed a sigh of relief. You sure that you want to do this? Pinky asked. I nodded. I was very sure. If you don't play, if, if I don't play with you, who will? I shrugged. I didn't really know, but I knew I didn't want to play with him. Isn't that interesting? For so long, that's all that he wanted. All he wanted was to play with Pinky and be included. And then he was finally included and they treated him horribly. And now he's doing anything not to play with them. That's interesting. Flea's house was on the way home. It was not on the way to everywhere like Jules's house, but it is on the way to some things some of the time. And Flea was in her yard swinging her arms wildly and kicking her peg leg and her regular leg equally wildly. Ha! She screamed, chopping her arms through the air. Ha ha! She chopped the other way. Hi, I said. Ha! said Flea, kicking the air behind her. What you doing? Aggression for girls, said Flea. Want to try? It's fun. I shrugged. Okay. I squeezed through the loose board in the fence. Flea sliced her arm like a sword through the air. She added a kick to the side. It was fabulous. I sliced and I kicked too. Ha! She screamed again. Ha! 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 I copied. Ha! Ha! We chopped and we kicked until we were out of chops and kicks. And after that, we went inside and watched an action movie with Boat Swain. He swam around like crazy during commercials. But when he stayed fixed in one spot in his bowl during the action scenes, unblinking, watching the movie. It was the most amazing thing I had ever seen. I'll try, I'll trade you a Carl Yatstramiski rookie and a Joe DiMaggio rookie for your fish, I said, holding out the cards. No way, said Flea. How about the rookies and a piece of gum? I said, and I reached into my back pocket, but the gum wasn't there. Then I remembered that I had traded it to Pinky a long time ago. This fish is not for sale, said Flea. He's family. Isn't that right? Boatswain nodded. I swear it. Why? How now? Putz, I began in Shakespearean curse, but then I stopped myself and I cleared my throat. I have something to say. Okay, said Flea. I looked around. I really didn't want to say it. It was something hard to say. It was much harder than cursing or insulting. Can I try on your eye patch? I said. Okay, said Flea. She pulled it off and I put it on. I blinked. Uh, it was fantastic. Flea's good eye blinked too. Her other eye looked as soft as a baby's and it stayed shut. You're blind in that eye, I asked. Yep, said Flea. How come? I asked. I come from a long line of pirates, said Flea. It was just as I had thought. Is that how you got a peg leg too, I asked. Yep, said Flea. I nodded, speechless. Then I gave Flea her eye patch back. Was that what you wanted to say, asked Flea. I shook my head. It wasn't at all what I had wanted to say. But now I had to run out. But now I had run out of other things to say, though I had to say it. I'm sorry that I didn't stick up for you yesterday in math class and on the bus, I said. Flea blinked, and she blinked again, and I just held my breath. Okay, she finally said, I forgive you. Oh, what a relief. So then I asked the question that I had been dying to ask. What is that in your backyard? Here's a picture of something. Come on, she said, I'll show you. So we hurried outside and there in Flea's backyard in broad daylight, gulp was a real live volcano. It was huge. It was made of mud and dirt and something called chicken wire, but there were no chickens. There was just wire. Flea poured a bucket of vinegar and some baking soda in the top and lava bubbled out. It was a mess and it was amazing. 
After the bubbling stopped, it got kind of quiet in the backyard. Flea looked at me, and I looked at Flea. What are you going to be for Halloween? I finally asked. A princess, said Flea. Always a princess. Oh, I said. I didn't like princesses. They are stu- I mean, silly. Princesses make me sick. And I just was about to say how much I hate princesses. And then I heard something else come out of my mouth. You would make a good princess. Grow unsightly warts. How did I say that? Thank you, said Flea. What are you going to be? A gentleman, I said. Oh, said Flea. It grew kind of quiet again, and then she remembered her manners. You would make a good one, she said. Thanks, I said. Then we poured more vinegar and baking soda into the volcano. Lava bubbled out like crazy. Death by volcano, I screamed, leaping and jumping over the foamy lava. Roar, roared Flea, jumping and jumping and running just like a crazy one too and there were plastic minutemen and red coats and trucks and motorcycles and packs of ferocious chihuangasaurus and a flock of flock of velociraptors that we had to save and so we did and it took all afternoon but we did save them all and after we finished flea brought out her book the book of alvin and she drew firecracker man saving the world from death and destru destruction on the side of the volcano. It was really super duper. Uh, do you think we can do this again sometime? I asked. Sure, said Flea. Anytime. Anytime. It sounded like something friends say to each other. And I blasted off towards home. Alvin, said my mother when Firecracker Man blasted into the kitchen. Uh oh. I looked at her face and it was not so great. Did you put a baseball through the neighbor's window? What baseball? I asked innocently. Not I. It was in her sink, said my dad. And it had your name on it, son. I love it when he calls me that. Usually. Dun, dun, dun. And that is the end of this book of Alvin Ho. Oh my gosh. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. Hopefully you did too. There's um, a little bit more in the book. It's the end of the story, but they have Alvin Ho's woeful glossary, which gives um, words and then their meanings, which is really pretty funny to read also. I'm not going to read through all of them, but um yeah, it just like gung gung is here and its definition is an ace pitching machine, an ace costume maker, and my mom's dad. So that's the definition of gung gung. Um, definition of kickboxing, not real boxing, involves punching in the air while bouncing back and forth in a boxing dance, usually done in a class at the Y. Just funny, funny things. And then also it has, which is really cool, um, a sneak peek at Alvin's new adventures. So there's a, at least one more book of Alvin Ho. I don't know how many more there are in the series, but it's called Alvin Ho, Allergic to Camping, Hiking, and Other Natural Disasters. So I don't know. I think I might Google that and check it out and see if they give um, any other descriptions about it, but they do have a couple of pages here. Um, it must be the beginning chapter, one or two chapters of the book. So I might take a look at that and see what that's all about. So um, your assignment for Alvin Ho is, I thought it would be fun for you to create like um, some kind of picture collage. So I don't know if you have a big piece of construction paper or um, poster board. If you don't, maybe you even have like um, wrapping paper that you could use the back side of or even the front side, like cut off a big strip of construction paper. And what I want you to do is kind of make like a movie poster about the book Alvin Ho. Maybe... Um, movie poster or like collage okay and so what you're going to do is you could draw pictures 
You could print pictures out from the computer. You could cut pictures out from a magazine. Just different things that remind you of the things that happened in the book. Think about all the funny things that happened. And you're going to find pictures or draw pictures that you could talk about and explain why you chose them because you will eventually then have to create um, a little presentation on the Screencastify Submit app or whatever that is, site. And you're going to have to talk to me about the different pictures you chose and why you chose them. Um, so I'm not sure when the due date will be yet for that. It's not going to, I'm going to give you more than just the end of this week because it's kind of a big project. Um, but it'll be sometime probably the following week. Okay. Um, I'll give you more explanation and I'll type something up so you know exactly what it is I want from you, but that's going to be, that's the main gist of your project for the end of this book. All right, so hopefully you think it's fun. Hopefully you love the story. And um, good luck on your picture collage for Alvin Ho.